Hey everybody, welcome. Uh, this is the uh, fourth video of the pseudocode and flowchart section. And in this video, what I'm going to do is take a flowchart, change it into some Python code. So a flowchart is a little bit different than you know the pseudocode and the structured English we did earlier. Uh, and that's mainly because it's visual representation as opposed to textual representation. Uh, but there's also some things you have to know when you're doing a flowchart. And I'm going to go ahead and put a link on the website that links to kind of a chart that shows you all the different stuff. Uh, but I'll just go over a few that we have here. So this rounded shape, this is going to be a start or an end. The parallelogram, that's going to be some sort of input or output statement. This is a conditional. And as you know, a conditional statement can actually come in many different places, such as in a while loop or a for loop or an if statement or anything like that. And if you're dealing with other languages that are not Python, you could have stuff like a switch, switch case or something like that, or a select. Okay, the rectangle, this is going to be uh, just an operation of some sort. So no input or output gets done, but there's going to be either a variable set or there's going to be a calculation or there's going to be something that goes on there that almost always uses a, an equal sign of some sort. Okay. All right. Um, or an assignment operator, I guess I should say. Okay. So in this one, uh, let's go ahead and uh, start translating this into some Python code. And then once it's working, I'm going to go back and I'm going to fix it so that it's a little bit better than um, what it might be if you were just to directly kind of translate it out of this flowchart. All right, so first thing is I'm going to get my number. I'm going to say input, uh, enter a number. And I think I'm actually going to change this to a float because it doesn't really matter if I change it to a float or an integer if I'm not too worried about the input. Uh, and then what we're going to do is this right here is our is our loop. It's a visual representation of a loop. So my conditional statement is going to be um, in the loop. And it's going to loop. Each time it loops, it's going to say num is equal to num minus 1. And every time it does that, then it's going to print my number. And eventually, number is not going to be larger and it's going to print done and then the program is over okay so this is really really simple code uh, let's go ahead and uh, run this and I'm just gonna say 10 and then you notice that it prints out nine eight seven six five four three two one zero done okay so that's pretty easy now what this flowchart doesn't do is it doesn't really tell us how to handle errors or anything that we might, any, any issues that we might have when running this program. And there's really only one place that we might have an error, and that is up here. Okay, so this right here, if I put in something that's not a float, then it's gonna crash. So if I do this and I write ha 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 ha, you're gonna get an error, and we don't want that. So to avoid that, we need to use a try and a catch statement. Now, I could make another loop up here that keeps going until we put in a number, but I'm gonna do it like this instead, just to avoid us having to do even more um, than necessary. Okay, I'm gonna write not a valid number. Okay, so what's gonna happen here is if I, if I run this, and I type in this now, it's gonna tell me not a valid number. So this is a little bit more complete code and it will still work normally if I type in a number like 14.5 and it's gonna run through until it gets down to negative 0.5. So while this over here, the flowchart doesn't show this, when you're actually programming, you still need to think of these things. So the pseudocode or the structured English or all those things, um, you noticed how the actual code 
sometimes look like it and then sometimes I added something or I took something away or even I modified it so that the, the program was a little bit better. So in this case, that's kind of the same thing that I've done. I've modified this code so that it doesn't give us uh, any possible errors or it won't crash on us. Okay, so this is how to change a flowchart into pseudocode or sorry, into Python code. It's a pretty simple, pretty short little tutorial. Uh, you could alternatively uh, do one more thing here if you wanted to, and you could put this in um, a loop like this. So this is probably the best way to do this. Okay, uh, and then uh, break. Okay, so this is probably the the best way to actually do this code. Uh, that way we get a number, and it will it will give a number eventually as long as you know you put something valid in. Otherwise, it'll just spit out enter a valid number until you actually do it. So if you were writing a real program, this is probably the way you'd want to do it. If you're just doing it here, we could do it, put it all in the try statement, and we're just fine. All right, so that's two ways to kind of solve that. All right, uh, enough of this video. Uh, if you have questions, please leave them on the website or in the comments section. And this is the end of the pseudocode and flowchart section, but I will leave some links as well for you to study more about flowcharts and to kind of practice them on your own. Okay, thanks for watching.